Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through some of the problems on the 14C Part 1 assignment. Okay, find E of X for the following probability distributions. And remember, that mean, that's this stands for the expected value. So that means 0 0.4 of the time we are expected to get a value of 1. So I'm going to do 0 0.4 times 1 gives us 0 0.4. And then 0.5% of the time, where our expected value is 2. So if we multiply 0.5 times 2, that gives us 1. And then 0.1% of the time, we're expected to get 3. So 0.1 times 3 is 0.3. If we add those all up, we get 1.7. So if, <clears throat> for example, these were spinners, and 40% of the time, you should expect to get 1. 50% of the time you expect to get 2, and 10% of the time you expect to get 3. Um, as you spin this over and over and over, you should expect every time you spin, you're going to roughly, on average, you're going to end up getting a 1.7, 1.7 points. Okay? Okay, moving on to number 3. When the spinner long side is spun, players are awarded the resulting number of points. In the long term, how many points can we expect to be awarded per spin? So this looks like this is evenly distributed. So it looks like, um, so if we, you don't have to make a little table here, but I like to, it just kind of helps, helps keep things organized and helps people understand stuff a little bit uh, better as well. So the probability of X equals X. So we've got, we can either get a five um, or a 10 or a 20. Okay, and each one of those is one third probability, right? So five times one third will give us five thirds. Ten times one third will give us ten thirds. And then twenty times one third will give us twenty thirds. So add those all up. Twenty, thirty-five. Thirty-five out of three which you can leave like that, or we can calculate it. So we could do 35 divided by three, and that gives us 11.67 would be the expected value. I like 11.67 a little better than 35 over three. It just is a little bit more, makes more sense in my brain. So um, anyway, either one would be totally fine. Okay, looking at number seven here. When 10 pin bowler Jenna bowls her first bowl of a frame she always knocks down at least eight pins one third of the time she knocks down eight pins two-fifths of the time she knocks down nine pins and then obviously the rest is going to be that she knocks down all the pins okay so find the probability that she knocks down all ten pins on the first bowl so we've got um, one third let's see even again I'm just gonna make a little probability table a little chart here we got X probability of x equaling x so we've got let's see knocks down eight pins nine pins and ten pins right so eight pins is one third um two fifths she knocks, knocks down two fifths of the time she knocks down nine pins or on the probability she knocks down all ten pins on the first bowl okay so we know that one third plus two fifths plus we'll call it x for the well let's call it y since we've got x up here already so plus y those all have to add up to one right so you could simplify your fractions and and all that or we can just simply do it on the calculator we can just do one divided by three plus two divided by five equals 0 0.733 so 0 0.733 y equals 1, so we divide both sides by 0 0.733. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, sorry, that is not correct, because that's, let's go back here a little bit, because that is 0 0.733 plus y, so we subtract 0 0.733. That, that makes a little bit more sense. Right, so we get y equals, let's do 1 minus our answer, and we get 0 0.267, 267. 
two, six, seven. And nice part about this here, if you want to turn this back into a fraction, which you don't have to, we can simply push mass, enter, enter, and it'll give us four, four fifteenths, whichever one you want. Okay, so that's for A. <clears throat> for B, on average, so let's see, this is 4 15, so I'm just going to write that in there. On average, how many pins does Jenna knock down with her first bowl? So that's going to be 8 times 1 third plus 9 times 2 fifths plus 10 times 4 fifteenths. Add those all, like calculate each one of those and add them all up, and that will be the average score. Okay, so 8 times 1 divided by 3, that's right, and then, so we get 0 0.2667, we'll call it, and then 9 times 2 divided by 5 gives us 3 point, oh sorry, this was 2.667, I've got to pay closer attention here. And this one was 3.6. Okay, and then we have 10 times 4 fifteenths. 10 times 4 divided by, oops, not 5, but 1 5. There we go. And that's another 2.667. Okay, so then we can just add those all up. We get 2.6. 667 plus 3.6 plus 2.667. Is that right? That looks right. And we get 8.934 for an expected, on average, she knocks down almost 9. 8.934. Okay. Um, moving on to number nine, when Brad's soccer team plays an offensive strategy, they win 30% of the time and lose 55% of the time. When they play a defensive strategy, they win 20% of the time and lose 30% of the time. On the league table, teams are awarded three points for a win, one point for a draw, and no points for a loss. Okay, find the probability that Brad's team will draw a match under each strategy so let's do this so this will be offensive and then we'll do uh, defensive and red defensive and these are our strategies right so let's do this X and then we got probability of X equals X we'll just make our little table here okay so we've got um, let's see, win is three points, draw is, draw or tie is one point, and then no points for a loss. So we, we've got x equals zero, one, or three, right? And that will be true for both of the offensive and defensive. Okay, so, um, the probability, let's see, when they're playing an offensive strategy, they win 30% of the time. So they get three points 30% of the time, so 0 0.3. And they lose 55% of the time. That's going to give them 0 points, 0 0.55. And then they don't tell us what the tie is, but we do know that 0 0.55 plus, we'll call it Y. How about this? We'll call it T for tie plus 0 0.3 has to equal 1, right? So that's... 0 0.85 plus t equals 1. If we subtract 0 0.85 from both sides, oops, 85, we get that the tie is 0 0.15. So that is 15% of the time they're going to draw. Okay. And then now if they go to a the defensive strategy, they win 20% of the time. So that's 0 0.2 they lose 30 percent of the time 0 0.3 and then we got to figure out what the probability is that they're going to tie so 0 0.3 plus the ties plus 0 0.2 all have to add up to one so those two added together is 0 0.5 plus t equals one 
subtract 0 0.5 from both sides and we get that t equals 0 0.5 okay so um, let's see now that we've done these tables here that's gonna make it make it so that we can figure this out a lot easier find the probability that Brad's team will draw a match under each strategy okay so we did that that's this a right here and then this is also part a right there right and then calculate the expected number of points per game under each strategy so offensive we're gonna do um, well we have 0 times 0 0.55 which we know is 0 and then we have 1 times 0 0.15 which is 0 0.15 and then we have 3 times 0 0.3 which is going to give us 0.9 okay add those all up 9 let's see that's 0 sorry not 0 1.05 under the offensive strategy under the defensive strategy we have 0 times 0 0.3 is 0 1 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 and then 3 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.6 so we add those together and we get 1.1 1 .1. okay so that's oops this is part uh, B here for each offensive and defensive strategies in the long run is it better for the team to play an offensive or defensive strategy it's going to be whichever one gives us the higher points which in this case here is going to be the defensive strategy okay and let's see one last one to take a look at here is number 10 every Thursday Zoe meets her friends in the city for dinner there are two car parks nearby the cost for which are shown below Zoe's dinner takes one to two hours 20% of the time two to three hours 70% of the time and three to four hours 10% of the time Zoe takes a long time to eat dinner that's that's a long maybe that's including like traveling time and and uh, I'm not sure what else but um, anyway which car park is cheapest for Zoe if she stays for each of these cases here so let's uh, let's take a look here okay so zero to one hour at seven bucks one to two twelve dollars so forth and so on so let's see which is cheapest if she stays one to two hours so one to two is gonna be car park B right because that's 11 versus 12 two to three hours is gonna be car park A because that's fifteen dollars and then three to four hours is going to be car park B because that's 1850. Okay. Zoe parks her car. She does not know how long she's going to stay. Which car park would you recommend for her? So, um, 20, 70, and 10. So the zero to one hour for us is not going to matter because we know she's going to stay at least one to two hours. Okay. So. Um, really, I, I, I can't see why those up there are going to factor into it all, so I'm just going to get rid of those. So, let's see, car park A, uh, recommended for one to two hours. That is going to be, let's do this, let's make our little probability table, X, and then we've got one to two, two to three, and three to four, right? And then we've got our probability of x equaling x now I'm gonna actually go back here and change this to our price because really the hours are not as important here so this is car park a and if it's one to two hours it's 12 bucks uh, two to three hours it's 15 bucks and three to four hours it's 19 bucks and then we can do the percent for probability for each one of those so this is uh, one to two hours is 20 percent of the time so 0 0.2 two to three hours is 70 percent of the time 0 0.7 and then three to four hours is 0 0.1 okay so that's a and then let's do maybe we'll do B over here in red 
So we got X, 12, 15. Oh, sorry, that's the, those are prices for A. For B, it's going to be 11, 16, and 18, 50. Okay. And then we can make our little chart here. Probability of X equaling X. Okay, and these are going to be the same, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.1. So what we want to do now is find our expected, um, find our expected value, right? So let's give ourselves a little bit of room to work here. So we're going to do, for this one over here, 12 times 0 0.2 plus 15 times 0 0.7 plus 19 times 0 0.1. Okay, and then on this side, we're going to do 11 times 0 0.2, 16 times 0 0.7, and 18.50 times 0 0.1. Okay, all right, I'm just going to add these all up, and then um, we'll take a look at the, our two uh, different answers here. Okay, so expected value for car park a is going to be 1480 so now we'll do the same thing to figure out the expected value for car park b okay when we go through and calculate everything for car park b we get 1525 so when zoe does not park her when zoe parks her car she doesn't know how long she's going to stay which car park do you recommend for her we are going to recommend car park a here because expected value for those there is going to be a little bit less than car park b okay all right, that's all we have for the 14C Part 1 assignment. If you have any further questions on this or anything else, please feel free to ask. Thanks.